Welcome to the Resist Average Academy, your source for inspiring stories, lessons, and action steps designed to level up every area of your life. Here's your host, Tommy Baker. Resist Average Nation. Welcome back to another full length episode, and it is time to create, it is time to grow. And guess what? We're brushing up against 2020. I mean, we're about, I don't know, 90 days away from 2020, like think about that and ask yourself a question. How do you want to finish? Do you want to finish with powerful intention and growth and results and fulfillment? Or do you want to do what most people do? Let's face it, right now they start to coast. Like mid-October into into November, they just start to coast. Coast mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and just really let everything go. Like habits that work, they let go. And, And I can share this because I've done this. And that's why I ended up writing a book about it. But then you wake up in January and it's like, not only do you have no momentum, but you've reverted back. And so you, it takes so much more activation, starting energy to stay, to get back to where you were, like just back to zero, let alone create results. So I just want to ask you that question. How are you committed to finishing? Just ask yourself right now. So it's not about like hustle and going crazy. This is about deep intention honoring your truth, honoring your dreams and visions enough to actually see them through. It's a big deal, something I train inside of my group, my mastermind and my experiences, because that's what we're here for. And today you are in for an incredible conversation. Before we get there, I wanna remind you that the Academy Nation is supported by an incredible company that makes superfoods and elixirs um, called Four Sigmatic. They have a product called Four Sigmatic Lion's Mane, um, and Taylor and I love this stuff. And it provides a, just a powerful level of mental clarity, mental energy, but without any crashes or feeling that anxiousness of like, oh my God, I have all this energy and I'm doing 11 things at once, which means you're probably doing nothing that's really, really uh, fulfilling or productive and it leaves you scattered. I don't like that type of energy. I like grounded, calm energy and this is what it gives you. Um, so check them out. Lion's Mane for Sigmatic. It's only 15 bucks and you get 15% off by being an Academy listener. You can head over to for Sigmatic, for S-I-G-matic dot com slash resist or enter just resist in the checkout line checkout line (laughs) in the cart and you'll get 15% off any product you get in the store. And so my next guest is a repeat Academy alumni. I first found his book when I moved to Arizona and I had a vision for something and I walk, I do this often, I'll walk into Barnes and Noble and I'll just go and whatever I feel pulled towards, I'll open and I'll read a passage and I can't tell you how many times it's been the perfect passage. His book, when I did this, I opened the page and it told me a story about a breakthrough that he had in Scottsdale, Arizona. So if I think about that, I had moved to Arizona, I walk into the bookstore, I open the book and he's telling a story. He lives in Phoenix, he's local. And it was a deep book called I Am. And um, his name is Howard Falco. And since that moment, we've, he's been on the podcast. Um, His first episode was incredible. And, uh, and then he's been uh, a repeat guest right now. And Howard is a author and expert on human understanding and potential. He's a spiritual teacher and a peak performance coach to college and professional athletes, CEOs, and corporate executives. This is what I love about Howard, that he is deep in the spiritual world and transcends that into the performance world of growth results and coaching, much like I am. Um, even though I'm not like I don't lead with spirituality, if you listen to my work, it's it's embedded in there. Uh, and we went deep there in this powerful conversation. So Academy Nation, welcome to Howard Falco on the show. Resist Average Nation, welcome back to another full-length episode. And as I said in the intro, I'm honored and humbled to have uh, a former guest back in person. Um, his last episode was episode 54 one of my favorite conversations uh, ever on the show, um, which I'm actually thinking about re-releasing and then re-releasing this one immediately after. So welcome back to the Academy, Howard Falco. Thank you, Tommy. It is uh, truly my honor and very nice words. I'm, I'm humbled. Well, me too, man. And you've been, um, just for some context, maybe if you didn't listen to episode 54, highly recommend after this conversation, maybe you go back. But you know, I found your work when I was really starting over in life, doing a complete reset, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual location. And, uh, and I walked into Barnes and Noble 
and I pulled out the first book without even thinking, and it was I Am, the book that's in front of uh, us right now, and I opened up a page, and uh, it said something about Scottsdale, Arizona, or Phoenix, Arizona, and then I started reading your epiphany story, and then I was like, I gotta meet this guy, I gotta get him on the <laughs> podcast, I gotta work with him in some capacity, and uh, and we've had the pleasure of doing all of those. Yeah, yeah, it's been great, that's awesome. It's very cool how it works, It's Synch- there's, synchronistic. There's, there's no mistakes, and so, nope. I just want to start here, though. How are you defining success in your life and in your business um, today? No, it's it's a great question. Um, I think the answer to that is just being content um, in each moment and being present in each moment and giving a full heart to each moment. That's and then experiencing that back. If um, if all those things are going on, then then that's a success to me. Not that I don't have massive ambitions, little ambitions, intermediate ambitions, but. <laughs> From a standpoint of success, am I giving love out to the world? Am I experiencing it, it back from the world, uh, from the people that I care about? Um, and um, do I feel fulfilled in, in that process? And so keeping it on a base level like that puts me in a really good mental state and yes. allows me to be my most creative and, and clear. I love that. And so how do you, how do you check in with that how do you how do you make sure that you're in alignment with that definition of success i mean do you have a special uh, a practice a routine a check in that you do with yourself questions that you ask like yeah, uh, meditation it's, practice it's what really does that simple. look like no, <laughs> it comes down to my state of mind that's it um and if my state of mind is in a good space uh I know I'm where I'm supposed to be. If it's not, then either I need a shift in perspective for the moment, I need more gratitude, less need, or I need to move. I need to do something in order to feel like, okay, I'm where I want to be in this process. Yeah. Um, and sometimes there isn't anything to move towards. Sometimes it's just being sure. and accepting that, hey, everything that I've ever wanted to come into manifestation for, you know, has happened and there's things that are still, many things that are still in the process. So I have to be grateful and I have to honor that power of life itself. Um, and I have to trust the silence um, a lot. Um, trust the silence. I love that. I feel like I know what that means, but, but unpack that for us. Yeah. Um, trusting the silence is knowing that when things aren't going on, that it's okay to accept that and to just be with that and to not try and force something to happen and to trust the fact that when the time is right, life will bring you exactly what you need, what you want and what you desire. Your job is just to stay focused, clear and open-minded so you're ready for those moments. Um, Now, it doesn't mean there isn't a lot of work to do and I guess we need maybe a specific example to kind of put it in real time terminology or some more practical terminology but whether it's looking for a relationship and there's some quiet nights trusting that you're going to find the right one when the time is right and you're going to take action when a friend says hey do you want to go out with us tonight we're going to go hang out and your inclination maybe would be to stay home and you go you know i'm going to do that and then you meet somebody or you know signing up for a dating service something that's a little bit out of your comfort zone and trusting that process and being open to it but there'll be times when not everything is moving towards that end and I think that's when you have to trust the silence and just be okay with it. Yes, that, and, and that's that to me is, is the most difficult to, to know that you're in the process, to know that there's that you've planted seeds, but you still go out, you, you still go out looking for the seeds to, to bear fruit and they haven't yet. And I know for me, a lot of my identity is wrapped in, in, in doing mm-hmm. and, and, you know, force in a sense of, of of taking committed action and discipline and all of these things but it's almost law of diminishing returns right it's like those that's things a great are, point yeah, yeah that's they're a great, great to, until until they start kind of working against you yeah that's a great way to put it the law of diminishing returns when you're working against yourself because it, you know the analogy i gave probably last time i was on the show was that you can't plant a seed and then two weeks later go digging in the soil to say where's my fruit some things take longer than others and you have to respect the process you have to respect life. And this comes down to the F word, you know, and this F word is one that people try to wrap their heads around. And, you know, it can seem like a four letter word sometimes, but the F word is faith. And that's a faith in life itself. 
and how it's produced everything that you see from nature to cities to the cosmos to our being right here, right now in this moment, right? This is a direct intention on both of our parts. For the listeners, this is a direct intention of theirs to absorb more awareness and more insight that's going to empower them in their life. So this is a beautifully creative moment for each one of us. So bigger moments take bigger preparation, take Mm. bigger patience and take bigger faith. Ooh, I love that. I love that. Right. And that's life's perfect vetting process because divinity being exact and being perfect in my experience of it has a perfect vetting process. It's so interesting, you know, in working with a lot of high level athletes, people have no idea the backstories, yeah, the fight, the stress, the fear, um, the um, amount of grit, the yes. amount of intensity, all for maybe just a fleeting moment where maybe they get a contract, maybe they don't. Yeah. And then all that work, and if it doesn't work out for them, then what? Then who am I? Then what do I do? So people see the final package product on the field under the lights, but they don't see everything that goes behind it. And they say, oh, I want that, or I want to be a, a rock star or, or, or someone who's got a big platform in life. But if they really knew the story, now we're seeing more documentaries being sure. done, right? Which, Which is kind I of, love yeah, going it's behind the scenes. interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that, that's a big part of the show. I want to unpeel, I want to go deep into people's stories so we can be empowered from having that perspective mm-hmm. of saying, wow, they had the opportunity to quit so many times. Wow, they got rejected by 27 publishers. Yeah. Wow, they were cut from this team and that team yeah. and they still showed up the next day anyways. Yeah. You, you have to be relentless. And when See, I say I relentless, love that. <laughs> oh, I love but I want to I wanna <laughs> caveat that because sure. when I say relentless, I, I don't mean to the point where you're working against yourself. Yeah. That's I mean, a razor's edge. I mean, it is though, and it isn't. When you have a greater awareness, it's not a razor's edge. When mm, you have, I'm not there yet. <laughs> that's why I've come well, you to you. you are relentless, <laughs> Tommy. You are relentless. Taylor says I, too much. She, it, she says I need more of the other. That, the, well, it's about a balance because yeah. that the other side is the faith side, right? The relentless yeah. is if I don't do this, then, then I won't get here. But that's not necessarily true. Sometimes just being and accepting that you're going to be okay no matter what is like the green light to the universe. Okay, he's ready. Here you go, you know. But when you're operating from a relentless perspective, fear can hide in that. And fear is a poison. Because if you're motivated through fear, the ultimate truth that you carry deep in your subconscious, deep in your identity is one of fear that I'm not going to make it. If that is the core driving factor of all your actions, then ultimately life has to match you Ooh. with that fear, with the result of that. If the driving factor is faith that you're going to make it no matter what, and you know it, then you'll be open to a lot of things. Now, here's what comes with faith. And this is why this is sort of, quote, the spiritual path, right, is one of faith and being and trusting rather than the doing mind. Sure. And I once heard... Uh, a teacher say that the spiritual path is not for the faint of heart because what comes with faith is total truth. So you have to really see where you are in relation to where you want to go, whatever it is that you're trying to create in your life. Yes. You're going to see the gap. And then you have to work to fill that gap with everything you need to do in order to get there. You have to be willing to take the criticism from people who may or may not be qualified to give you criticism. And then you have to <laughs> decipher what out of that is good information and what is from, from a well-respected individual and what isn't um, in order to fill that gap of putting the conditions together to help you get there. Whether it's in meeting the right people, whether it's in taking a leap financially, whether it's in um, being vulnerable to hear 20 no's by finally asking for the, you know, to get to where you want to go to the people that matter. Those are the type of things that your soul has to be willing to experience. And anybody that's made it has been willing to do that. And they're like Teflon because what I've learned about high level people in the world, whether it's athletes or any individual is the no's don't bother them. The strikeouts don't bother them. The, the missed shots don't bother them. All they're thinking about is the next one mm-hmm. and how they're going to make it. 
So they pick up information from that process of going through it. So let, let's take each one individual. So a major league baseball player, the top level hitters, when they strike out and they walk back to the dog out pretty pissed off, they're thinking about the sequencing that that pitcher just gave him and how to beat him the next time they step into the box. Yeah. Then they get on the field and they're playing defense for a little bit and then they get back in and then it's their time to get on deck. They're starting to think about how they're going to adjust in order to execute. Yes. And that's what makes them a great hitter because more than three times out of 10, if they're a great hitter, they're gonna execute, which is basically Hall of Fame numbers. Believe that as baseball, three out of 10 it's, times. It's, it's, a great, it's a great metaphor. Right. Yeah. I, I love that, I love that. And, and what you're talking about there is, is taking an, an input and having the perspective to just treat it as feedback and feedback is such a big part of mastery long-term mastery yeah right? now you're on it because there's the demarcation line those that don't succeed take that information and allow it to stick to their soul as i failed i'm no good and then they got to work Identity's for three months into that yeah so their identity gets injured then they have to work six months to overcome that before they can get back going again the person that knows they're going to make it doesn't take it personally. They just take the information. Okay, why did they say no? Why wasn't I good enough to get that meeting to get to where I want to go in that space? What was missing? I'm willing to look at it. And then they get to be the willing. Key keyword is willing to look at it, like you said, from a place of truth. Yeah, but 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 willing. But more importantly than that, Tommy, it's being willing, be, knowing that you're going to get there no matter what. no matter what. It's it's an inner it's an inner knowing. So nothing on the outside affects you. It's only information. So you're pulling information, information, and then you're adjusting and making adjustments and feeding the circumstance differently until you finally get there. So that's that's one model. The model that you talked about earlier was operating from basically fear and scarcity, which can be a great motivator for action, right? It might not be the the, the, the most grounded action, but still it's It a, will work to a point. Yeah. But ultimately you have to remember that the driving factor for how life is going to treat you is going to be based on your dominant truth. And if the mm. dominant truth is driven from fear, from a big picture, the ultimate outcome is going to be one where you're, the, the probabilities are going to shift you experiencing more of what you don't want because you're operating from that fear. So it will work to get you to a certain point, but ultimately to get to the next level, sure. faith. That's when you have to make that transition. That's when you have to make transition. That's when you have to, to not worry about time because you're stepping into that's a place the hard, of knowing. That's the hardest one. <laughs> no, not, it's not hard or easy. It depends okay. on your intention, right? But, I've, but I've, I've come to you directly because I've I've literally come to you and, and, and said, hey, I, you know, I'm frustrated that this isn't happening fast enough or this thing, this project isn't taking off or I'm at a point in my career where I want things to be further along. And it's, 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 it's a hard pill. It's, it's hard to... It can be. Faith can be hard. It can be. I like to rather you say that it is hard because it isn't or isn't, it, it, it is or isn't hard. Yeah. Depends on the individual and the intention, right? Uh, last time I gave you the example, I think of Michael Phelps, you know, in the pool at 3.30 in the morning, swimming 50 laps yes. every single day. Now, to me or you, is that easy or hard? Well, that's really hard. But to someone who identifies himself, I'm not saying it isn't hard, but it's way less hard than it would be to me and you because yes. his intention and in knowing is so concrete. So he knows this is gonna lead him to what he wants to do. Whereas for me and you to do that, we'd, you know, I'd make it maybe lap three and be gasping <laughs> for air. But, um, so it's, it's relational, hard or easy is relational. It can be hard when you're, when you've only known doing. Sure. What is it to let go of doing? Ooh, that can be, you know, that can be, that can be a scary space. Especially when doing has, produced a result, produced a fruit, produced yeah. a momentum. And if it is, keep doing. Yeah. But if it's not, and you start to have a negative state of mind, then it's time to take a break. Then it's time to back off. Then it's time to trust that things are going to be okay. Because this is a big chapter in Time in a Bottle, this idea um, of need. You know, and I've said this before, that it it's good to have wants and desires and goals and dreams. Those are all awesome intentions. But when you slip to need, that's when it can get, be problematic because life is constantly trying to tell us that we have everything. 
And so gra- not, and that doesn't mean you don't want to create. I'm, I'm very much for creation because in the Buddhist philosophy, they say that desire is the root of all suffering. And I disagree with that completely. It is not desire that creates suffering. Desire is exciting. You know, if you think about things you desire, Absolutely. it's fun. Yeah. So it's really not desire. I think that might be a misinterpretation. I think it's need that is the root of all suffering. Mm. Because life's trying to always show us that, look, you through millions and trillions of years, you're birthed into existence. We're here now. I mean, that's America. That's pretty cool. If you don't trust that process, what what can you trust? So true. You know? So true. That's why I always always look to to like lower that bar on gratitude and go back to the essential. Like, like go back to the most essential thing. And when I'm on the mountain, that's that's the type of stuff that always comes up. I mean, look look at my look at look at what's here mm-hmm. in relation to the things that I'm looking to create. I mean, this the, come on, right? It's the, look at this beauty, right? Exactly. I'm, I'm right here, right now. But and and people ask me this, and we 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 likely talked about this on the last show, but it's always relevant. It's it's where is that fine line between? Hey, I'm I'm incredibly grateful for what I have right now. You know, I, I live in the United States. I have this, I make this income, but man, I, that mountaintop right there. I mean, that's where I want to be. And so how do we operate in a place where we're, we're, we're in the best of both worlds, meaning that, you know, cause I mean, can too much gratitude lead to complacency? I mean, is that, have you seen that? You can swing the needle both ways. You can be yeah. too complacent or you can be too going a hundred miles an hour and that yeah. neither one of those work. The, the perfect space is right in the middle. So the question is, what does that look like? What do you mean by right in the middle? Excuse me. And that comes down to, look, if you know that that's where you want to go and you see the top of the mountain and you say, that's where I want to go, then you have to find out everything that it takes to get there. And you got to find out what's keeping you, what has kept you, not keeping, what has kept you yes. from getting there. Yeah. What is it? What's missing? Make a list. What is the, What are the components that are missing? And then dissect each one of those to determine how you can put a plan into action to begin to change that. A focus plan on each part of that. You know, a lot of people like to climb big mountains in, in, in the world. Yeah. The bigger the mountain, the more preparation, the more time. And there's been many people that have tried to climb Mount Everest yeah. that have worked their whole lifetime to do it and got, you know, 500 yards from the summit and had to turn back yeah or had a storm come in and wipe out half of their the people going up with them or um had an injury or just things happen i mean that's life sure but the ones that eventually plant the flag up there keep coming back find a way to get there stay focused on it and and i think that's the process of being driven in life and getting yourself to your goal you have to be relentless in the pursuit of the awareness of what it takes to get there not so much the actual physical steps but the awareness because and and this goes a little deep now we're getting a little deeper because when you talk about the awareness this is when i talk about what are your the beliefs that are driving you and that's this whole next level of seeing what has prevented me from finding the right person to fall in love with, from getting the right job that I want to get, from feeling healthy every day, from being happy. You know, that's where um, you really find out what it is because my feeling is, and, and what both of all my work is based on really at the deep, deepest level is identifying how you look at who you are consciously and what you haven't yet looked at subconsciously that's been driving your life. Mm. That's the, this is the real nugget in all this. Yes. Because this is the only thing life can connect to is who you truly identify yourself to be as a human being. And a lot of people walk around not knowing how they've, um, how they've built that identity. And obviously I am takes you through the core of how that's all come together. So once you get on this path of total self-awareness, that's when you can start to look at, okay, from a parental perspective and from grandparents and and my genealogy what kind of genetics did i get did i have grandparents and parents that were high strung did they were they insecure did they um did they have some some human flaws that we all have at a higher level one or the other um and how much of that is in me that i didn't realize that i need to be aware of because awareness leads to evolution mm. 
Let me say that again. Awareness leads to evolution. And the reason that it does is because you can't change something in yourself until you know it exists. And that goes for all these things we talked about, whether it's fear, whether it's uh, an attitude or an energy you're putting off that you don't realize is putting other people off and you thought everything was fine because you thought you were doing it the way you're supposed to do it. Um, a certain behavior, a certain um, physical attribute that needs to be adjusted and changed. So anyway, so this total, that's the idea of total self-awareness is looking at the genealogy, how you were nurtured, how you look at the world, what kind of truths you adopt about what's easy or hard, right? Yes. That's a great example, actually. <laughs> totally. Um, and how you can shift that. Because the minute that you do, and this is what's really cool about life, it takes notice. And it starts to feed you with the new identity. And the ego is the bridge in that process. I don't want to get too deep, but you can ask some questions about it. But No, I uh, love that. This is a lot of information. But. So, so what, how, how do you, what are some of the, the tools maybe that you use to create that awareness? So like if, if you don't know that you're operating a certain way, I mean, if you don't have that awareness at all, I mean, what are some of the ways that you can actually step back and create that perspective to be able to be the observer or maybe ask for feedback or maybe through creating space or maybe through mm -hmm. some type yeah. of modality um, to be able to be the observer instead of the, the person in the trenches. The very first thing you do is ask questions. How do I change this? I'm not where I want to be. What do I need to do to change it? And then slowly but surely, life will begin to answer you. Now, I always love being real time there is a reason this podcast and these words are coming into your ears. You have drawn this in as a piece of universal information, insight. I'm just humbled to be in the space for the moment with you talking and discussing. There's a billion different ways out there to draw information in from books to movies to podcasts. So this is it for right now. This is an example of the universe responding and providing awareness. So A, ask questions. Yes. B, be present and allow this insight to come in so that you can start to be more self-reflective on how you've been thinking, the type of mindset you carry, because your mindset in every moment is laying the seeds for your future experiences. And if it's one of not good enough because I'm not here, that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yes. So life's gonna continue to try and feed not good enough until you say good enough for this moment here and now. And you start to appreciate, respect, and love more of who you are. Because the more you feel good about who you are, the more you can open yourself up to receive more from life. Ooh, I love that. Might, have to, say, might have to say that again. <laughs> no, you might have to say that again. Because okay. the more you can appreciate, respect, and love who you are right now, for your whole journey, just to get to this moment and to be wanting to be more expanded, to want to experience a greater sense of life and a greater experience of life should make you feel really good about who you are. Because like every human being across the world, we're all trying to create and experience something that allows us to feel joy and happiness, most of us. And so, that should make you feel good. But the more you can do that, the more you can love on who you are and appreciate who you are. And that's that being moment, right? To yeah. just say, you know what? I am good enough now. Yes. And I'm not gonna, in the next moment I can work harder. That's fine. But for this moment, I'm just gonna sit and rest in that and appreciate myself. Maybe for the first time at this level that I've ever done in my entire life. Ooh, that's powerful. Now, when you do that, there are a million different lines and connections that are being rewired with the universe in you because the universe now knows that you are ready to receive more to match that newfound sense of love and appreciation. So there's a lot of different ways to say this. It gets a little bit esoteric, but your some would say your vibration gets higher or <laughs> you just you're expanding your heart, you're expanding your soul, you're 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 just becoming a um a more peaceful human being and a more loving human being. And then the universe can start to open up to you in ways and shapes that will astound you because I, I, I went through it. Absolutely. I, yeah. I love that though. I love that, that, yeah, what you just described, 
and, and your ability to receive. I mean, your 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 self love, gratitude, and appreciation for where you are right now, who you are right now, and how that translates into receiving more because that that's an abundant energy. You know, something just came up that I wanna I wanna talk about because I, I feel like when when you've worked so hard and life has been what you felt has been a struggle. You don't realize how much that struggle becomes a component of your identity and your subconscious. Yes. And you don't realize how much your subconscious is actually looking for the struggle because it gives you a sense of knowing who you are because it's a component of who you are. It's comfortable. It's not desired. It feels safe. Yes. It's comfortable until you're not comfortable in the struggle anymore, until you're done with the struggle. And ironically, the paradox is to be done with the struggle is to simply come to a place of acceptance that you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now. And there's not one single thing wrong with you in this moment. And all of a sudden That's, for the moment, you're not struggling anymore. Ooh, but, but for, for somebody who identifies in the struggle, I mean, even that moment, even that slither of time, they might be in surrender, they might be in acceptance, but they might not want to stay there because that's not that's not matching the the hardware that's been implanted for so long well then it comes down to intention well do you intend to continue to struggle yeah <laughs> so you got to get uncomfortable you got to get uncomfortable with not struggling you got to get uncomfortable with seeing more of your beauty and seeing more of your perfection and seeing more of your completion in this moment that doesn't mean the next moment you can't work to do something else i'm not it's not stopping progress it's actually freeing your soul so that you can be more powerful in the creation of more progress. Mm. Right? So the, yeah, this this is where what you said earlier. I mean like this this is why I love your work because you're you're bridging deep spiritual principles with mm-hmm. with performance. And a lot of the people that you work with are are the, the high performers in the most cutthroat places and you would think that those two worlds aren't as connected as they are but that's why i love your work thank you that that's really nice cutthroat's a little tough word maybe just just competitive sure you know we're, sure. we're in, in good spirit but I mean, of competition high level high level yeah. golf high level athletics i mean it's it's yeah there you got a lot of high level intense people trying to work into a very small space because there's Incredible. only one champion or one you know only five people and in the top think, five yeah or, and i don't think people realize how oh, small that space is and how comment. big the numbers are trying to get into that space wow now that's a great comment and you're right i got goosebumps on that because you're people underestimate there's you know there's remember the game king of the mountain when you were a kid yeah yeah there's only one right when you're at the top so the amount of intensity over a lifetime that goes into that is so incredibly strong each and every day each and every night for years of work and shaping and molding to get there so you can look at you know tiger woods domination in golf or um uh or or tom brady in football um peyton manning another great example um or somebody in music you know like like someone like beyonce you know i mean obviously that comes with other gifts and talents that they were born with genetically and worked but the amount the level of work in there, the level of intensity is very very high and the good thing about knowing that is that it helps you with your expectation level helps you with your understanding and your patience and your respect for the process yes your respect for the process that you're in In a social media headline world, entrepreneurship, influencer, big authors, New York Times bestsellers, champions, uh, overnight successes, actors, that that pressure for now is at an all-time high. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's a very short-term, people want it quick and fast. And so they're building a lot of house of cards where you might get one little blip on a viral video, social media wise, but there's no foundation under it of real work. It was just trying to get, you know, this whole idea of hacks, you know, I go back and forth on this. A lot of times I I look at it and I'm just like, wow, that's selling people such a, an unfortunate path of disappointment eventually, because there are no shortcuts. If you want the ultimate shortcut, it's mass self-awareness. 
That is the shortcut in life. That is the ultimate hack of mind. But you better have a good teacher who's willing to take you through the path you need to go on in order to face everything and and help you get through that to let you know it's going to be okay to face these truths and to dig these things out in order to reshape you and rewire you in a way where the universe is going to respond in a much more fulfilling way to you. Um, but the the ultimate exciting thing for those that are willing to take the real path is the power behind it. Because you're mm-hmm. deal- when you tap in, you're dealing with the power of the universe. And when I say power of the universe, I want to give you the mechanics behind that. The universe works on intention combined with where your truth is and then time is the gap in between which is the your awareness so if you want to create something over here and this is where you are in your truth time is what's the function is in between you and getting to where you want to go and how that gap closes is through awareness because awareness is going to real um is going to lead to new actions it's going to lead to a new mindset it's going to lead to a new state of energy and all those things combined are what work to close that gap between what you want and the actual experience of it now my question is (laughs) i mean how fast can we close that gap well again isn't isn't manifestation or law of attraction isn't the whole premise behind it is that that the gap you know you have this gap and by by being it now by being grateful for an advanced uh, a future reality that isn't your circumstance yet but you can imagine you can feel you can set the attention that you're closing the gap and you're embodying it today is is that is that the model i mean obviously there's 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 time let's go really practical with this so like we can put this into something and i'll just sure. give you a journey from my own life yeah okay when this happened to me when i went through this experience and my consciousness expanded and i knew i was sitting on something just incredible all i wanted to do was share it i didn't want to proselytize or preach i wanted to put it out so i looked in the world what are the different ways people share information well one of the main ways is through the literary world you put a piece of work out and those that are interested come to it and we'll read it and if and you have an idea of, of a certain um, audience in mind, you write for that audience and you hope that, you know, you've done a good enough job and eventually they come to it. Now, with the beautiful thing about the literary world is it could happen in the first month or two the book comes That's out true, or yeah. it can happen 10 years later. Yeah. They can find the book and it can explode. So there's really no time frame on books um, because they can be found at any time. But that process for me I just wanted to get the work out to the most amount of people in the world that were looking for it. So I didn't care whether I was going to go with a big publisher or whether I self-published it and and drove around the country. That's what I was going to do. That's what I was passionate about doing. But in the effort to go with A, which was a big publisher, I had to decide how does that process work? I cannot tell you the amount of patience that I, 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 it's, it's, infinite that I had to have. Nobody knows this, but I finished the manuscript in 2006 and I said, okay, I I want this to go to an agent. Well, before I even show it to an agent, I want it to be in the best shape possible. And then I had to hire an editor that had worked and convince her to work with me that had done some stuff (laughs) that I respected. Yeah, convince her. Yeah, because she said, said, why should I work with you? Yeah, that's how it is. And I said, well, here's what I believe about my material. And she said, I feel that. Send me some examples. So my passion led to her, okay, now I'm working with her. Now we edit the material. Now I'm, now the energy of my belief has ratcheted up again because I know I did something that's going to further me. No guarantees. Okay, now I got to query agents. Now I'm ready to show an agent. So I started to do that process. Took another six months. Found an agent. What did they feel? They felt the work. They felt me, but no platform. I've never, I, all my you know, people that I have are pretty big people. I don't have anybody without a platform. You're the first person I'm going to take on. Why? Because the energy, all the background, all the work. Now let's go find a publisher. That took another year. We had to write a whole proposal based on a book I already had done. Wow. I just wait a year. So I worked on a 70 page, 80 page proposal for a book that I'd written three years earlier. I'm trying to give you the backstory. No, I love it. I love the backstory. That's my point. Yeah. So then we, we had three options on, on publishing companies. We went with one. And then I had to go through and edit with the publishing company. 
and they put me on the docket for like eight months to be published yeah. in eight months. Two years later, wow. I got my publishing date. Wow. My agent told me I'm the most patient person she's ever met in the entire world. So that's my personal journey. Someone else could have an idea for a book, write a proposal, find an agent within a month, get it to a publisher, get a big deal and be published in five, six months because of the way their composition of their genetics, their upbringing, their energy, their whatever, for a whole different reason and intentions. The book may come out and then that's it. They never do it. You know, they used it for their business and, and that was it. That the book, my intentions are much bigger and stronger. So the universe is testing me in a lot bigger way, but that's the path I had to go through. It was like a five year path. That's incredible, man. And it's still in process because, you know, so yeah. again, I'm just, people look at things and say, how did that happen so quickly? You know, and there's, sure. there, you know, there's no overnight success. You, you the universe is going to vet you out for your dedication and your intensity and your, your um, veracity in what you're trying to do. And when you say vet you out, what do you mean by that? That ultimately, ultimately those who honor their process, who plant their seeds, who exercise patience, ultimately they're going to be rewarded in some shape or form. Vet you out means the universe is going to say, are you who you say are? Okay. You think you want to be a published author? Are you ready to spend the money to have a high dollar editor go through your work? Are you ready to take the criticism? Great. Now are you ready to put it up to see if an agent might take you or, or not? Are you ready for that rejection? Okay, great. Now are you ready for the rejection from publishers? <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Now are you ready to find out how hard you have to work once you get a book published to go out there and work to get sales? To and make to sure sell people... one copy. Yeah, to sell one copy. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you who you say you are? And, and it over will keep... and over, over again. And it won't ever stop. Yeah. Okay, I have bigger ideas of what I want to do with this platform. I'm working on it right now. The process has been at times excruciating. I will never relent in what I want to do, ever. I am that passionate about it. And there's times where, yeah, I wish things were tracking a little bit because I know how powerful this work is and how many millions of people can be helped by it because I I see it constantly on, on a weekly basis, on a daily basis. I get, it's incredible. I'm very humbled by it. So, and I see the struggles and the suffering in the world. And I know self-awareness is a big part of, of helping people with all these issues. And so I'm never going to stop. And so that is my... I mean, so I say to the universe often, I'll say, bring it. What else do you have for me? Bring what, bring whatever it is, because I am not going away. I'm just not. So however long it takes. And by the way, I felt this way when I wanted to put myself through school. And I knew my parents didn't go to college. And I had no idea how I was going to make it through college, because we, we had our financials in our house were not good growing up. But I found a way. I found a way to get the process, financial aid, paid off all my loans eventually. You know, I, I found a way. I wanted, you know, again, I'm just showing you personal examples from no, the journey I because I, I think it's important. Yeah. I, you know, I wanted to meet the right person. I was willing to go through many nights of not dating someone that I wasn't interested in or I didn't see a future in because I wanted to keep the space open for when there was a chemical reaction, when there was a physical reaction, when there was a mental connection, you know, and I had to wait a long time for that, what I felt was a long time, years. And, but again, this is the vetting process for, for each person. But, but here's the big but, it, you will get there if you don't stop. Yes. If you just stay aware, stay patient, and keep pick up, picking up information like this or other like information. So powerful, man. I love how you, how you broke that down, the, the, the process of the book. Because somebody can just, you know, something, I mean, if, if you haven't done this, if you haven't done that, it, you can look at it and assume done what we read if, the, uh, you know if you haven't if you haven't put out if you haven't created something like that you oh you mean having this public put yeah, this out in the world yeah. yeah and you just you just unpack that for us and you know somebody in the audience is listening and they have a, a, a goal it could be a, a micro goal whatever it is and that that questioning is what was the question that you were asking like um are you who you say you yeah the universe is going to say okay if this is who you want to be are you who you say you want to be See, people see the tests, and I say people, and this has been me, the tests as feedback from the universe that says, maybe this, maybe this isn't this, maybe this is not for you. And what you're saying is that we have to look at the tests. We have to actually invite the tests and look at them as as something that's gonna ultimately help us. 
Your but will, they're there for a reason. Your will will be tested constantly. It's a test of your will. Is your will strong enough to get through this? Are you willing to deal with what's happening, take a step back, reevaluate, and come back again stronger under a new understanding with a new level of energy? Or are you going to give up? And that's okay. You know, that's free will. You can, you can decide to go a different path anytime in life. But each of these doors that you go through of tests are just showing you, hey, if you want to go here, this is what it's going to require of you. You see people on TV or you see people doing things in the world. I don't think you realize what's be quite behind that. Yeah. You ready to take a peek? Because here's <laughs> yeah. what you're going to have to do once you get to this level. Are you ready for it? Okay, just checking. Good. Now you can step into that arena. Let's see how you do. You know, let's see, let's see what happens. Let's see if how much this matters and how much this means to you. And that's what I mean. You know, we talked earlier about that sacred space for athletes or individuals, you know, that that's the reason why is because the sacrifice at the highest levels in the world are enormous, enormous. Um, so for you practically, because I mean, a five-year path to get a book published, the, the, all the stuff that you're working on right now, your, your whole journey, a lot of part of my journey, somebody listening journey, there's, there's going to be those, those inflection points, those moments of, Hey, the test comes and it's like oh, it, another test and you just overcame a test. What do you do practically when you start questioning your path because of the tests? You're, it's like you got another test and you're like okay there are only two choices one resist and say i'm not i don't really have the energy i don't want to deal with this or two accept and say okay i'm going to accept that this is happening therefore there's a reason behind it and that brings up another big big idea about life if it's happening there is a reason to it. And there's, I know, realize that there's a lot of ugly things that go on in the world. There's also a lot of beautiful things every day that go on in the world. But if something is in existence, this is the level of trust you have to have with life. Not that you like it, not that you accept it, not that you want it. But if it's happening, there's a reason for it. And to break it down even further, if it's coming into your experience directly, there's a specific reason for you. Now, this could be something minor, like you go to the grocery store to find something, a certain food that you like, and they're out of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's just to say that, you know what, <laughs> sometimes you just can't snap your fingers, go, you know, pull something off the shelf and you have to be grateful for the fact that you live in a first world country where, you know, you have the means and you can go and you can buy something in a store like that where some, you know, 2 billion people live without clean water and food every day and shelter. It's an astounding number actually around yeah. the planet. So sometimes it's just a little memory. Hey, it's okay. So they didn't have your type of jelly today. You know, <laughs> you're okay with that. And other times the tests are bigger. Like you get in a fender bender because you know, you weren't paying total attention for some reason, maybe your phone or whatever. And the universe is giving you a little nudge saying, Hey, ignorance has a reaction to it and here you're lucky it was only a fender bender but that's got a reason to it too or maybe it's a traffic jam and you have to learn patience or maybe it's you know the unfortunate tragic event of, of the passing of a loved one and you have to remember the finite nature of life and how to not sweat the small stuff and be grateful and put a smile on yourself every day because you're, you know, you get to live life and you get to spread joy and love every day. Maybe it's something like that. So again, th these are all different tests from sure. the smallest thing to the biggest thing. But the point I'm trying to make is that if it's in your reality, there's a reason for it. And if you can look at life from that perspective, it can help you just take pause, take a minute to look at what's going on. And instead of resist and cause time in your life, you accept and say, okay, how can I work with this? And all of a sudden your days are getting better and smoother and faster and faster, meaning, um, less trouble, um, because you're, you're in more of acceptance with life. Yeah. It's that it's the, the, re, the, the what I get from the reasons are, is the opportunity to remain curious.
the opportunity to have these external things happen and and remain curious enough to 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 not judge them or to not see them as proof for whatever's happening or not happening but just asking the question what? well it, it, yeah to to not only get curious but to realize that there's something in that moment that may be leading you to exactly what you want and you Ooh, never connected that, that takes faith that, that that takes that's exactly on it. that's right it takes faith I, I for example i want i want this po- I, I i believe this podcast could i don't know what what word to use could should will be ma- massive I, I i i believe that with the space that we create here with people like you and other incredible guests this could be one of the best podcasts in all of personal development I totally agree with you. I think you're and an I, I have a great a interview. Huge desire for that. Yeah, and you're outstanding at what you do. I deeply appreciate that. But there's a gap. Because there, there has been. There has. Okay. There has been. Yeah. No, I like that. I like that. And what he's doing there, guys, is he's correcting my language of reaffirming. Because we don't know what can happen in this moment. Yeah. You don't want to is this moment because then you're capping it. So you just so it say has, it has been, been. There has been a gap. There has been a gap that could change at any moment. Have you found out what the gap is? What are the list of things? Numbers, advertising. Sure. You talked to producers of big podcasts, demoed your show and showed it to them and asked them what it would take to get this on their bigger platform. Have I've you? done things, not all the things. Okay, so there you go. There's a lot left to do, right? Yeah. There's a lot of things. And what's going to come from that experience is vulnerability. You're going to have to get vulnerable. And then you're going to have to hear the real feedback from someone yeah. at another level that's going to expose gap areas. And then you're going to have to face those gaps. But that's the process. But, the, but being relentless and having faith that you'll get there no matter what, who cares? Just give it to me. Academy Nation will be right back with that awesome conversation. But I get asked all the time, how do you have so much energy, Tommy? How are you so clear? How are you on fire? The secret is I'm not always on fire, but I do the work every single day. I also align myself with brands, products, services, supplements, food, nutrition, environments that really put me in mental, physical, emotional peak states so I can perform. I mean, that's what we're here for. And something that I've come across recently, I've been using for now about four or five months, Taylor introduced me to them. They're called Four Sigmatic and they create this amazing mushroom coffee with lion's mane. It gives me a level of productivity and clear energy. You know that like really clear energy, like it's strong, but it's not jittery. You feel like kind of like Zen at the same time. That's exactly what this has been doing for me. I've been taking it every single day religiously, sometimes twice a day. I know, I know, I know if you've seen extra fire from me, but it's all healthy, it's all organic, it's all clean, no crash. And they were cool enough to say, hey, we know you like it. If your audience is into it, we're gonna hook them up. And that's exactly what they did. 15% off their entire store. The mushroom coffee that I get is only 15 bucks and they have travel packs. I take it to me um, to the podcast booth. Uh, before coaching and especially when I write in the morning and I need that clarity but I don't want to have that jitter where I'm like trying to do 19 tasks at once so check them out foursigmatic.com that's four s-i-g-m-a-t-i-c forward slash resist foursigmatic.com forward slash resist check these guys out uh, if you're looking for clean energy if you're looking for productivity and high level performance this is for you well yeah no that I th- and I, I believe that's that's really the difference when you if you i just call it if you're pursuing mastery you really welcome that feedback i, I know for me as a, are you pursuing mastery absolutely okay for then me for go. me as a writer you know i had someone tear the leap apart at, on goodreads the other day and instead of letting my ego get in the way and you know there were some parts that were you know it was critique like like adolescent critique but i said i i, I stripped the ego away i said is there any part of this that's true? Wow, that's powerful, Tommy. That's yeah. really powerful. And I love and that I you mess- said there's I some actually Adela- messaged them. Uh-huh. And, I, I, I heard, and I said, I said, you know, I said her name and I said, I just wrote her and I said, thank you for this. I hadn't considered this and I copied and pasted what she said. And I, I let her know that I'm, I'm looking to improve as a writer and that I'm actually taking that feedback. Huge. Which was, which was, it was a, a breakthrough for me because it, it, it could have been easy to say, Hey, I got a, a two-star review. There was some stuff in there that was kind of childish in a sense. But because I, I do, I am pursuing mastery 
in that craft mm -hmm. and it's something that really lights me up um the feedback is i was able to strip away and 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 just ask the question is is part of this true and what can i learn from this and how can this make me better for the next project that i'm working on you're totally walking your talk totally 100 percent. huge respect for that because you're going to get some valuable information out of that sometimes you might get just someone who's a you know a lot of uh, uh, critics out there just like to be critics they like sure. to be negative sure. you know it's just part of the process but sometimes there's some good insight in there yeah and so to open yourself up vulnerable to that and take it in huge and that's what making a quantum leap is about humility is what causes a quantum leap because when you're humble you open up to the insight that may help you get to the next level when you're not humble you block all this awareness and you wonder why you're still stuck you know someone wants to tell you you know I don't think you were the nicest you could be to that person, someone who's dating, you know, and you were a little bit all about you. And if someone doesn't want to hear that, they'll never adapt and change and they'll never find what they want because they'll keep themselves in a circle of, oh, uh, and then they'll keep blaming the other person. Yeah. Rather than look at themselves. But the minute you can look at yourself and expand, boom, things change. That's powerful, man. That's powerful. And it's, it's, I think we have to remain open to, to feedback in so many modalities in life. Yeah. You can be strong by being humble. Yeah. And then, you know, it, but the ego is a sneaky thing, right? It wants to protect, protect, protect. And, it, you know, what, what matters is, are you where you want to be? If not, then, then humble yourself and be willing to take in new insight, new information. And again, listening to this or any other material like this is one way to bring stuff into your life that may make you question some things. And, and that's real change. I love that. And so somebody out there is, is, is listening and and they're feeling it, they're getting it, and it's, it's speaking to them. And they know that there's something that they desire, something that they want to either change or create in career, in entrepreneurship, in their own creation, maybe relationship. Um, what do they do when this episode is over? <laughs> 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 Boy, that's a broad, open-ended question. Um, <laughs> um, where, where are they? Where, where is like you know? We've talked a lot about awareness. We've talked about faith. Okay. Um, I, I you know, anytime I you could, speak, I'm I'm looking. I'm looking. All, I'm, like my mind's going through all my past experiences, <laughs> all the things that I've seen, being the student, being the teacher, and I'm I'm you know just organizing them all. But if somebody out there is lacking clarity but they felt like this spoke to them. What, what do they have to do next? Okay, so th there's an easy process. Um, one, you just get your intention down on paper as clear as it can be, as crystal clear as it can be. This and is what would be an example of, a, of that? Well, I, that's up to each individual and their own intention. I sure. could be a million different intentions, but you'll have to give me an example. Um, okay, somebody wants to, to, you know, double their income in their business and grow as an entrepreneur. Okay. They want to double their income in their business. So they have to look at where their income is and how they got there. And then where the leveraging pieces of the business are that they can put investment, time, money, sweat equity into in order to increase the number of sales. So if it's an entrepreneur with sales, they could go back to every customer. I'm just throwing stuff out here, but sure. they could go back to every customer and say, we're thankful you're a customer. Do you have anybody else that you know that would need our service. And that would take time and you'd have to organize a list and you'd have to call every customer and you'd be willing to ask for the order. And they might say, no, but you know what? I need some more of your stuff and I haven't talked to you in a while and I'm glad you called, you know, and there's a new order, okay? There's an incremental shift right there just from the willingness to do that based on the intention of doubling the income. So there's one little practical thing right there, right off the bat. Now, with the intention as, as specific as humanly possible, what do you mean as do, do we always want to make it as specific as humanly possible meaning it, do you say uh, you know my intention is to double my income or my intention is to like put it down at the penny i mean does that does that specificity i think the more specific you can get the better as long as you release yourself from any attachment to the outcome hmm. it's just so you're pointing yourself in a much more specific way but you're releasing yourself from from the need to have it in that exact way and then okay. you'll get close to it which is good right it's like um 
a lot of times when I, first thing I do with athletes when they come in is I'll crumple up a piece of paper and I'll say, hit the target on the wall. And they're like, what target? I'll say, hit the target. And they'll just throw and they'll hit a, you know, my bulletin board or something up there. And I'll say, no, the target was the door handle. And the point I'm trying to make from the silly exercise is the more specific the target, the more you can direct your energy at it. So that's why, that's where we start right there with intention and goal setting, because I want you to be very intentional and specific about it. I, I may have mentioned this last time, but I worked with a guy in MLB, an eight-year veteran franchise player that was aging and, and was worried about declining results. And he wanted to, he wanted to get back to doing well. And I said, you ever written goals down before? And he said, no. So well, let's get very specific. And I said, not only do I want you to write goals down, I want you to stretch it by 15%. RBIs, home runs, batting average, whatever. You keep it to yourself. But I want you to write those down. And I want you to you know, have that in your mind that that's what you want to accomplish for the season. So that logs into his subconscious. He believes that he's going to try and attempt that. And he doesn't even realize how much his body and his mind are working towards that target. He ended up having a career year in Major League Baseball at his oldest age playing. He hit more home runs than he ever hit in his entire life. That's awesome. Now, that's just one great example. There's there's sure. a bunch of different examples. You know, I worked with a quarterback in Division One college football, you know, about opening his mind to the possibilities, and he created one of the greatest games in Arizona State football history, you know, because of that, because his mind was willing to be open to, to any possibility. That was his main focus going into the game. No matter what the situation, he was going to be open to all possibility. And it ended up being one of the one of the greatest games. So when when it comes to somebody sitting at home listening, get very intentional. Write them down. Don't be afraid to put down what you want to achieve in the highest order. Don't judge what you're writing. Just write down what you want to accomplish. From a pure desire component. Yeah. Like without... I, I told you the story about how when I was 21, I wrote down everything I ever wanted to accomplish in the next six months, year, three years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and 50 years. I put the, I, I remember the one thing the exercise said was do not judge what you're writing. So when it came to like 50 years and I'm thinking like owning an island or something, and I'm like, <laughs> all right, I'll write it down, you know? Um, but I stumbled over the list 23 years later. Yeah. Now remember at the time I just gotten out of college. I was in debt from school. I was in a starting job, which was really hard in the financial industry. I had nothing other than, you know, my old car and an, I was living in an apartment and rooming with a buddy of mine. And I had all these things I wanted. And I looked at this list after I was done writing it thinking, how am I ever, I can't, you know, I, I have no clue how this is all going to happen. And when I looked at that list 23 years later, I fell out of my chair. I couldn't believe it. What had, had come into being just because life knows our intention and helps to feed it. Now there's components that need to be in there. It's not just writing the intention down. You have to do the self-work to feel worthy of, a, of achieving it. Hmm. That is a big journey in life. And that's why self-awareness is the path to that because you have to dig out anything in your subconscious that may have been hindering you. You have to be really looking to, to be naked with yourself and look and be okay and say, okay, that hasn't served me that thought. I'll change it and I'll be more open and I'll be more belief. And you have to demonstrate that belief every day, but life is amazing in how it begins to deliver those results. So someone that wants to double their income as an entrepreneur, set the intention to it. And every day, think about how you're going to do one, two, or three things extra to help produce that. And then watch where you are in six months. Watch the change. You might be blown away by the change. I wanted to get one book published. I worked so hard and had so much patience that they came to me and said, we want you to write something else for us. I didn't ask. I didn't go create it. It came to me as a result of all the patience and effort and work demonstrated. It mm -hmm. came back twofold, actually, you yeah. know, ironically, you know, so, which is, which is fascinating. I thought it was a great opportunity to, to write on a piece that got edited out of the first book and expand on it. But the point was that was a result of all those years. So life tends to um, come back and bless you, you know, two, three, four, five, tenfold from what you ultimately wanted if you're willing to go through the path and the belief and the patience and the faith and the silence to get there. Ooh, I, I love that, the retrospective, because I found, uh, I found a piece of paper, kind of like yours, where I had... I was applying to this mastermind program and it was like from five years ago and it said 
you know, like your, what are your goals? What do you want to do in the next 90 days? What do you want to do in the next three years? Um, where are you today? Like all of these questions. And it was a beautiful moment to open the sheet and look at, it, it was a reminder that for me personally, some of the thing, and I, I told this to Taylor the other day, that a lot of the life that we're both experiencing individually and collectively is what we used to dream of. And so it was a reminder to stay anchored in gratitude because for me personally, the more that I <laughs> create, the, like I, I see the mountaintop and it becomes more vivid and I wanna be at that mountaintop even more. But it was a reminder by looking back and looking at the sheet was like, oh wow, like these are the things that right now is what I used to dream of. How, how can I like embody that in a deeper way? How can I operate from a, a grounded gratitude from this place, even though the mountaintop is still out there, mm -hmm. but honor this mountaintop as well. Stop looking at the top of the mountaintop and just enjoy every <laughs> step Camelback, of the way. <laughs> <laughs> but did you ever go up Camelback talking with a friend and you're just taking one step after the other talking and yeah. then you stop and then to rest yeah. and you turn around yeah. and you're like, holy cow. I know. Happens That's all what time. life is like when, yeah. you're, when you're absorbed in the process because you're not looking at the mountaintop you're enjoying, embracing, being mindful in every moment, being grateful and and honoring each moment along the way with the subconscious intent of what you want to accomplish and life will do the rest. It will guide and get you there. But that's where you have to go into faith. And if you ever pop out of the moment, like, why isn't it happening? Why? Just go right back get to back absorbing into yourself yeah. in the next task you can do and how you can absorb yourself and gratitude about the process. It's amazing because I, I hike a ton four times a week. Um, the times that I'm present in enjoying just this step, flow states happen. That's when I get to the top and I'm like, oh, I see the mile, I see the little markers, and I'm like, wow, I'm I'm here already. That was, but the moments that I'm I'm overthinking it too much in the head or looking way beyond, that's when I'm. It's like, damn, I, I, I like what, what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. I, I could usually do this much faster. Like what is going on right now? So it's a great metaphor because in those, in those flow states, in those states of presence, time just, time just collapses. Man. It's yeah. If it, it flies or it, it doesn't exist yeah. when you're in a flow state, but let's look at why. Yeah. That's what I just looked at and was <laughs> blown away. Right. I, know, I can't I believe it. Like yeah. how time has flown in this interview, but just to, to say one other thing about that, if you're not in the moment, you're thinking about a place that you should, oh, I should be at the top, or I should be here, I should be there. You're in a disconnect with truth. And when you're not in harmony with truth, you're in time. When you get back in harmony with truth, you're not stuck in time anymore. You're mm -hmm. in a creative process. And that actually starts moving you closer to what you want. But when you pop out and you go, I should be here, I should, now you're creating time again for yourself because you're not respecting the moment. You're not respecting where you're at. You're not respecting that being in this place right now is an integral part of getting there. And not Ooh, only- not That's only, huge. Yeah, not only an integral part, but an integral moment to accept that this is where you're at right now. And that should be enough to be grateful and good enough for this moment. Not that you don't want to get somewhere tomorrow or the next day, but when you know, you don't worry. So if you don't, if you're worrying, there's doubt, and doubt creates time. So don't worry, no, and then work every moment to get there. And before you know it, you'll be there. Boom. I love that. I, I love how you said it's integral part of the process because it is because it's it's the one that's right here. And if we don't take this one, you're sure as hell not going to get to that one. And Tommy, there's a, there's another deeper well on that. Is if you're not grateful, then what are you really trying to serve on the in the core? You know, there might be a piece of not good enough still stuck in the subconscious that needs to be weeded out. And I know it sounds paradoxical to say I am good enough, even though I'm not what I ultimately want to achieve yet. But it's actually the biggest wheel greaser in getting there. Oh, completely agree. That that's the inner that's the inner work that whenever I'm blocked externally or feeling blocked or out of alignment or in that headspace of things aren't happening fast enough, I just I 
I go within and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I go back to that place. Yeah. And then something ev- eventually happens really positive because you went back to that place. Yeah. Something Even comes though I up. have so much resistance in the moment. Right. But once you pop back into the flow state, <sighs> amazing what, what, what comes into your life. Yeah. Another universal little signal or something comes in to say, hey, you're right on track. Don't worry about a thing. We've got it covered. You just be you with a full heart and full faith every day and watch the magic of the universe take place. I have seen this over and over and over. And every human being on a different journey, yes, on a different path, because their composition, their soul's journey, their makeup, their genetics, their nurturing, their, their experiences in life are all different. So you can't really compare. You can get ideas from people's lives, but your journey is unique. So whatever's showing up is important for you, whether it showed up for somebody else or not, irrelevant, except that there's a reason that it's showing up for you and you'll get through it quicker. That's where, that's where the comparison can be very, Mm -hmm. very dangerous. Yeah. Compare. Yeah. If it's, you know, because what what you just said is, is honoring our unique path. And it's so easy to look at somebody else's path Oh, that, I don't, I don't, that's not, that hasn't happened for me yet. Right. Or It's a beautiful tool of the ego to keep you stuck in time. It's a beautiful tool of the ego to keep you who you were. Remember, the ego has to protect our identity because our identity gives us life. So when you're trying to stretch that identity, the ego's like, oh, wait a minute, where are you going? We're, I know. We're, we're I, get back to the comfort zone here. And you have to. I see it with my clients all the time. Mm-hmm. Like the, 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 the pull is so strong. It, it'll bring you to your knees, the type of fear Literally. that the ego will use. Yeah. And comparison's one of them, you know, that yeah. it'll use, but there's a lot of different ones. When I first started this journey, I'll never forget the moments of knee buckling fear especially when I had to speak for the first time or when I knew I was going to leave my job in the financial business with a wife and two kids and a mortgage, wondering, I had no clue how I was going to replace that. None. And I made it, you know, I just threw my hands up one private moment with the universe. I said, okay, I'm giving it up. I'm going to take the journey. I'm going to honor this. Let's see what happens. And, you know, thankfully I did that, you know, I'm still on the journey and it'll, and I know it's a constant process, but that was a big one because it gave me the keys to the door to know how you really break through and how you get to another level and how you, you know, where it really comes from. That's why, you know, I so badly want this taught in schools to, to get self-awareness taught in schools. I think it's the best way to prepare our youth for the future is to give them a greater understanding of who they are and what's possible for them. Because every, you know, so many kids grow up with such misunderstandings. Um, parents who do the best they can, but oftentimes leave their kids with a lifetime of suffering out of them and unwinding mentally. Yes. Um, or kids that don't have parents or, you know, abandonment issues. So, so many things that self-awareness could be. Can you imagine having a subject in school, like yeah. reading and writing, self-awareness? That'd be incredible. Yeah. Incredible. It's probably the most, I believe it's the next evolution in, in humankind. It is. Is self-awareness. Do, do you remember that? Do you remember that specific moment on like where you were when you made that, that decision to make that, that move from the financial? Yeah. I was in the car with my wife and I said, I can't be the old version of myself anymore. This has taken over my body, mind, and spirit. And I want to do everything I can to honor it, this grace and, and work towards it and, and share it. And right at that time, a darkness of fear took over my entire body. I don't know if you remember that Spider-Man from like eight years ago where there was a red Spider-Man and then yeah. there was one in a dark black suit. Yeah. And when the suit changed from red to black, it like was like spider sort of webbing cr- that yeah. just took over when he Creeping went sort up. of evil or not, yeah. but it just, the darkness took over and I felt like that's what was happening. And it just took me to my knees in a state of, of just, fear and eventually it passed and it didn't stop me thankfully um but those are the moments you know the dark they call it the you know the dark night of the soul where breakthroughs occur where you get through that and you're sort of reborn into a new space of okay i got through that now i know i can move forward and create but 
you know, as we're, when we're younger, we're optimistic, we're open, anything is possible. As we get older, um, our, our brains start to work on us a little more conservatively. So as you get older, you've got to continue to work to keep that mind open and creative and try new things. And I think the people that do that age the most gracefully and the most, have the most fun and, you know, versus getting all crumpled up and cratchety and, you know, <laughs> and it happens because life kind of becomes loud and fast and, you know, the more you can kind of keep an open mind. But anyway, so yeah, I do remember that moment very vividly. That's powerful. There were that's, several of them, but that was one of them. Yeah. And then that's just so powerful that that darkness coming because it, it comes in all shapes, ways, and forms. But and, it's a lie. Yeah. Because what that darkness, this is really kind of key. Can I go on? on Absolutely. Okay. That darkness, that voice is a liar. And it's going to try and tell you everything you can't do. This happens to, to I hear this all the time. It's a liar. Yeah. Because there's only one truth about life. And that's infinite possibility. That is the truth about life in every moment. And the more open you are to it, the more it comes into your life in a million different ways, shapes, and forms. And again, that's another beauty of the path of, of self-understanding and self-awareness is to, you know, because life can go one way or the other. It can shut you down on what's possible. And you can, you know, I know, you know, even friends of mine, even though I do this work, they're just so negative about life. And, I, you know, I just look at them, shake my head. I go, well, or all this is possible. Yeah. You know, and again, you have to retrain your mind to think in possibilities, whether they occur or not, isn't what's important. What's important is that your energy and your mindset and all the thoughts and actions that you're putting out are in congruence with that state of infinite possibility. You're willing to pick up the phone and, and make a phone call. You're willing to go do something new that someone suggested that you fought before because you didn't think something was possible about it. You know, those are the type of moments in life that that are game changers. Yeah. That's like transcending. I always say it's like, it's easy to choose abundance when you have a lot of markers of abundance in front of you. But can you choose abundance when the ego is, is looking around and trying to convince you that all there is is scarcity. Like, are you still willing to choose abundance? Are you willing to transcend that circumstance? Mm -hmm. See what's really happening and choose abundance. Mm -hmm. and I've had I've had countless instances where the ego was like, scarcity, 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 scarcity. But like deep down in my heart, I knew it was like, I knew the choice I had to make and the mm -hmm. choice was abundance because deep down underneath all of these circumstantial scarcity, I knew what was underneath all of that. Yeah. Or yeah, I knew it was abundance. Yeah. I felt it. Or it's trying to, to, to tell you not to do something out of fear. And then you go and do the thing, like go to a retreat or sign up for a class and you have the time of your life and you meet all these new people or you learn something new or you gained a new connection all because you were willing to step out of your comfort zone and get over that voice in your head that tried to tell you, nah, just lay on the couch and just watch another episode on Netflix. You're like, you know what? I'm gonna do something different tonight. Always. And that's the game changer. There's because, always a payoff. Yeah. I, I always just compare it to physical physical training because even though I've, I've, you know, I've owned gyms and physicality is a big part of me, still three or four days out of the week, I still, there's still resistance. But there's no, there's unless I'm I'm sick, and even then, there's never been a time when I engage in physicality, and I don't I don't I don't receive something from it. Mm -hmm. And I just use it as a metaphor for other other parts of life. Yeah. I have resistance over the social outing. Maybe that's you know the other day we were in Sedona with Taylor, and um, she wanted me to do a psychic reading. Dude, I had massive resistance. I had massive resistance. Yeah. And I was so indecisive and I was like, I don't know. And I was going back and forth. It was like, so not like me. And I'm oh, very open. Something good must have come out of that because uh, yeah. your ego knew you were well, about she to told me. something. Yeah. <laughs> she told me, she says, I was like, I can't do it, baby. Like, I was like, I'm, I have so much resistance right now. I'm, I'm not open. I feel like she's going to feel my energy. It's not going to be open. You know, the guy had said that if, if your energy isn't in the line, she'll send you back down. And I'm like, she's just going to send me back down. And, and then and then she said that's the fact that you have resist <laughs> resistance means you have to do it and i was like oh shit that's actually absolutely true mm -hmm. like where is this resistance coming from you know my ego is finding all these it, things oh that it's this so isn't the right person it's not the right time right maybe this person it doesn't know what they're doing maybe it's a scam i mean all of this stuff yeah. 
Right. But but you opened your mind and you did it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like when maybe, and I got obviously you got something. Yeah. Right. right. Something that was really cool, right? Yeah. Made you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times in, when mediums go into a room, it's the it's not the people that are coming looking for a reading from someone. It's the friend that came with just to, okay, I'll go. I don't really believe in this stuff. Yeah. And they end up getting something. They're like, whoa, like no one in the planet knew that. There's no way you could, you know, and they end up getting whatever they needed out of the. Exactly. But it's, but it's the person that was in the most sort of. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it, yeah. it's amazing. But even with all the other spiritual practices that I've done, it's like even when I felt like I'm open, then there's this moment of resistance early on or during the process. And then it's like the threshold increases and there's resistance. And then there's a, a, a complete acceptance and surrender and letting go. And that's when it's like, okay, I'm okay. exactly where I need to be. So let me speak on that for a minute. Cause that's a really key thing. When you're feeling the most resistance towards something, there's a bigger breakthrough on the other side. Mm. Because what's happening is the ego is fighting that soul stretch Yes. into a new identity. Yes. And it's this last little hold on before you stretch and expand yourself because you're not, not going to be the same person after that in a positive way. I know. It's scary. Yeah. For the ego, it's it's like, holy holy crap, what yeah. is happening right now? Well, the ego is designed to protect, protect until yeah. the will is so strong, it just redirects the, nope, you're not going to protect anymore. We're going to expand. That's who we are. Yeah. And boom. And I've had many of these experiences in rooms with people or in interviews or, you know, with significant people that I thought, okay, this is going to be interesting. I'm not, you know, um, and it's been one, it's been fantastic. That's incredible, man. Yeah. Well, man, it has been a pleasure, man, having you back. Uh, first time around was episode 54 and definitely a couple years ago. Um, and, uh, man, it's been awesome to have you in my corner it's, since oh, it, there's my when, honor, Tommy, when I'm going through something or I need perspective, I mean, there are about three people that I immediately come to mind and, and you're part of that tribe. And so like, thank you for, for holding that space for me. And absolutely, um, I just, I love being on the journey with you, man. Yeah. And same here. Your, your, your work is incredible. I mean, I've had, I've had Dispenza, Lipton, uh, Braden recently, and it's like your, your stuff is as powerful as theirs. Like, and thank you. It's just, it's just amazing to see you and, and, in the arena um, because <laughs> that's what it is but tell people where they can find your amazing work okay so there's two books that i have out there on uh, amazon barnes and noble and should be in every bookstore one is called i am the power of discovering who you really are and the second book is called time in a bottle mastering the experience of life um both powerful books on self-awareness and creative power and then um my website is howardfalco.com for individual private session work and company session work and then uh the last thing is uh two things in my uh, sports website for athletes is totalmindsports.com and then um the work i'm trying to do to get this into schools and and uh, around the world um for education is called eightwisdom.org so that's that's where my work is that's where my heart is and um tommy i can't thank you enough for having me back on for all you do to help share this wisdom with so many people um and all your fantastic work so thanks that means the world man and i'm humbled and i'm honored and guys please 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 check out his work obviously you listen to this episode you know where he's coming from you can feel his energy his intention his wisdom it's incredible we'll leave you out on this man um you hear the phrase resist average what comes to mind Wow. Uh, the thought that I had before you even said that, and you saw me put my finger up because I, I had this thought come right before you said, what does it mean to resist average? To me, it means to love and accept yourself for the full perfection that you are and allow the universe to shower you with all that that means in terms of what you can create and experience for your life. Resist any limiting idea of who you are. That's what that means. That's going to be my new intro, man. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man. That came from a powerful place, mm. man. So again, Howard Falco on the Academy. Thank you for your passion, your wisdom, your wisdom, your energy. My honor. Um, and uh, I feel honored to be a student of your work and uh, look at you as a mentor. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it, Tommy. Thank you. Wow, another awesome Resist Average Academy podcast. Thank you so much for being here. And it's Tommy, and I just wanted to say thank you. I know you have endless opportunities and endless choices when it comes to podcasts. And the fact that you chose the Academy tells me everything I need to know about who you are and what you're committed to creating in your life. 
If this resonated, I ask you to take 60 to 90 seconds, go to iTunes on desktop or mobile, search the Resistant Average Academy podcast, leave us a five-star review. We are working hard to increase our exposure, and this is the number one way that you can support the mission. So head over to iTunes now, take the 60 seconds, tag a friend when you resonate and connect with an episode. It would mean the world. I want to thank you for being on board on the Academy.